106.7 weather. Here's your KQNK forecast. Bright sunshine expected today with daytime highs approaching 73. Winds out of the southwest 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overcast skies tonight. Slight chance of rain showers. Those dip down to about 51. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. Slight chance for showers. Highs around 78. Dry Wednesday and Thursday under clear skies with highs in the upper 70s. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Laura Lockwood. Currently, it's 44 degrees. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. A jury in the discrimination trial against the city of Topeka has found in favor of the plaintiffs. Roxanne Stewart has more. The jury in the trial in federal court in Topeka ruled the city's government discriminated against Major Jana Kizar and Captain Colleen Stewart on the basis of gender when it passed them over for promotion in favor of a less qualified male candidate with credibility issues. Both women were awarded compensatory damages and back pay. Captain Stewart was also awarded front pay. Both Kizar and Stewart remain with the department. I'm Roxanne Stewart. Beginning January 1, the amount someone will receive with the Kansas Housing Voucher Program will be based on zip code. Residents have been receiving a flat rate for their vouchers. The change is happening through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and will impact several but not all Kansas counties. The change may allow some residents to afford living costs in areas with higher incomes. There's more at HUD.gov and then search for Kansas. This is Kansas Information Network News. Have you lost can care? At healthcare.gov, you can find a low-cost, quality health plan. Do plans cover doctor visits? What about emergency care? And prescriptions? All covered and more. Plus, with the new law, four out of five customers can find a plan for $10 or less per month with financial help. Healthcare.gov is here for you. Enroll today for coverage starting the first of next month. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Smokey the Bear. Then you know why Smokey tells you when he sees you passing through. Remember, please be careful. It's the least that you can do. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. After 80 years of learning his wildfire prevention tips, Smokey Bear lives within us all. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. And remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Good morning. It is Monday, September 23rd. It is 8.07. I'm Mandy Fick in for Natalie Hadley, who is on vacation this week. And it is time for your KQNK News being brought to you by Firebolt Ag LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. An annual independent review of Kansas's foster care system shows that it fell short for the third year in a row of improvements to housing instability and mental health care delays. The review is mandated by the terms of a class action lawsuit settlement agreement, which was reached in 2020 after child advocacy organizations sued the secretary of the De- Kansas Department of Children and Families, which oversees the state's foster care system and other state departments in 2018 for failures within the state's foster care system. The Washington, D.C.-based Center for the Study of Social Policy conducts the independent review each year. The state showed progress in 2023 in reducing the number of times a child slept overnight in an office or other non-licensed facility, with the state reporting that 57 kids spent a total of 68 instances in a non-licensed facility, and that was down from 85 kids and 141 instances in 2022. However, early 2020 data shows the progress was short-lived as in the first half of the year there were 141 instances of a child sleeping in a non-licensed foster care environment. The state highlighted that 69% of youth in DCF custody received timely mental health and trauma screenings, an improvement of 35 percentage points from the 2021 report. However, it's still below the class action settlements benchmarks, which began at 80% in 2021 and escalated to 90% for 2023. Each progress report evaluates the system based on five performance improvement goals, and the report said despite the state's focused efforts, most performance measures remained or fell below the settlement agreement's requirements. The DCF contracts with five private organizations to provide foster care services to one or more of the state's seven geographic areas. It's a time...
It's a sign of the season, political campaigning and the posting of campaign signs. The Kansas Department of Transportation again reminds the public that all political campaign signs or billboards are prohibited from being placed on state highway right-of-way. By law, all right-of-way on state highways is exclusively for public highway purposes. On only regulatory guide signs and warning signs placed by KDOT are allowed on the 9,500-mile state highway system. KDOT has jurisdiction over all interstate, Kansas, and U.S. routes. When KDOT maintenance crews find political signs on state highway right-of-way, the signs will be removed immediately and without notice. All such signs will then be taken to the closest KDOT sub-area office. Political campaign signs not retrieved from the sub-area offices will be disposed of after the election. Political campaign advertising is allowed on private property bordering state right-of-way. However, people placing or erecting signs in pri- on private property must first obtain permission from the property owner. A state law passed in 2015 related to placement of campaign signs on city or county-owned right-of-way does not apply to state highway right-of-way. Persons placing signs on city street or county road right-of-way should consult the local jurisdiction on any rules. Officials at CanCare, the state's Medicaid program, want to return Kansas maternity care deserts into an oasis with help from a federal grant. Melissa Warfield, the director of Medicaid policy and research at CanCare, said the agency is finishing its application for the Transforming Maternal Health Grant in hopes of being one of 15 states to receive 10 years of support and $17 million from the federal government, saying this is really a -a once-in-a-generation opportunity for Kansas. March of Dimes reported that more than 45% of Kansas counties qualified as maternal health care deserts, which is 13 percentage points more than the national average. And a recent report from the Commonwealth Fund estimated that 41% of maternal deaths could be averted with an integration of midwife workforce into health care delivery systems and address some of the maternal workforce shortages in the U.S., Warfield said these are the same benefits she hopes Kansas will reap by expanding the midwifery workforce and can care reimbursement structures under the grant. She said the goal of the program is to create a community systems and the Medicaid-based midwifery growth would work hand-in-glove with community health care systems, physicians, and existing birth care facilities. The grant aims to reduce low-risk cesarean sections incidents of severe maternal mortality, low birth weight and Medicaid expenditures, and to improve overall parental outcomes, perinatal outcomes. In the past several years, Kansas officials have expanded postpartum Medicare coverage up to 12 months and added doula services under the program. CanCare has submitted a letter of intent to apply for the grant, which is due September 20th, or was due September 20th. Warfield said award dates and disbursements are subject to Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, but awarded states should begin implementation in early 2025. I'll be back with more of your news after this. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. U.S. Senator Jerry Moran, ranking member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, pressed Department of Veterans Affairs leaders, VA Undersecretary for Health Sharif El Nahal, and Undersecretary for Benefits Joshua Jacobs during a committee hearing regarding the nearly $15 billion shortfall at VA for fiscal year 2024 and fiscal year 2025. In July, VA briefed Congress on a mandatory funding shortfall of approximately $3 billion for the Veterans Benefits Administration this fiscal year that, if not addressed by September 20th, would delay benefit payments for more than 7 million veterans and other beneficiaries on October 1st. 
VA also briefed Congress about an expected funding shortfall for approximately $12 billion in its medical care accounts next fiscal year. The Senate is currently considering a bill to address the budget shortfall this fiscal year for veterans' benefits before the Friday deadline so that benefits payment are delivered on time next month for veterans and their survivors. During the hearing, Senator Moran questioned Under Secretary Elnahal and Under Secretary Jacobs about the lack of appropriate communication and transparency with Congress and the American people about VA's funding needs, which put services for veterans and their families in Kansas and across the country at risk. What happens today and tomorrow on this issue and whether veterans and their families receive their benefits on time matters, said Senator Moran. It seems to me the VA and OMB failed to pay the respects to the U.S. Senate and members of this committee. My complaint is the lack of notice, knowledge, and the motives seem to be to have Congress act without having all of the facts, which is wrong. Senator Moran also questioned Undersecretaries Elna Hall and Jacobs about the timing of VA announcing this shortfall to Congress, which came a day after the Senate Appropriations Committee complained, completed its markup for the military construction, veterans affairs, and related agencies. You claim you didn't know for certain about the amount of money, but you knew something was happening, said Senator Moran. In both a letter and testimony, the indication was that con- Congress would be informed. This has a lot of consequences as we do our appropriations process, and we only learned about this after we had marked up Milcon VA. In 2022, speeding was a factor in nearly a third of all deadly crashes in the U.S., according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. They often hear from first responders who warn about the dangers speeding posed to you, your passengers, and everyone around you on the road. What you may not have considered is that speeding can damage your finances for years to come. The numbers prove it. Data from MarketWatch show Kansas drivers see an average a 25% increase on their full coverage auto insurance policies after a speeding ticket, jumping from $200 to $249. For drivers with minimum liability policies, rates jump an average of 31% from $53 to $70. Haley Neff, a member of the Market Watch research team, said that these rates aren't expected to go down. Once your rates increase, it can be difficult to get them back down. Some insurance providers offer discounts if you use a device that track your ba- driving behavior, or you can get quotes from multiple providers to find the best rate. <clears throat> It's a busy time for farmers in Kansas with fall harvest underway. The Kansas Highway Patrol would like to remind motorists to use more caution and patience when traveling around farm trucks, tractors, combines, and other implements. As the busy farming season is underway, each traveler in Kansas needs to be more aware of increased farm implement and truck traffic, said Captain Candace Brashears. In Kansas, we have a many, many trucks exiting and entering the roadways at any given time. Traveling around these vehicles requires extra caution. Most farm equipment is not designed to travel at highway speeds and may only travel 15 to 25 miles per hour. Farm equipment is often wider than the lane of traffic, so extra room should be allowed when sharing the road. Caution should be practiced on all roads, but especially on busy rural roads with unmarked intersections. Tips to keep in mind, don't assume the farmer knows you're there. Pass with extreme caution. When a farm vehicle pulls to the right side of the road, it does not mean it is turning right or allowing you to pass. Be patient. Think of the slow-moving vehicle emblem as a warning to adjust your speed and pay attention. State wrestling sites have been selected. Advent Health Sports Park at Blue Hawk and Overland Park will host the 6A Keisha Boys and Girls State Wrestling Championships February 28th through March, 20, March 1st, 2025. This marks the first time a Keisha State Wrestling Championship has been hosted east of Topeka since 1983 and the first time in the Kansas City Metro since 1978 when the 5A competition took place in Shawnee Mission. Advent Sports Park at Blue Hawk is designed to host a variety of sports including basketball, volleyball, hockey, ice skating, dance, cheer, pickleball, five 
P5 soccer, wrestling, gymnastics, bowling, and so much more. With the growth of girls wrestling and the increase of classifications, more sites will be used to accommodate crowd size and lodging. The Keisha will evaluate this on a yearly basis, says Keisha Assistant Executive Director Mark Lintz. The Class 321A competition will return to Gross Memorial Stadium in Hayes. Fort Hayes State has hosted 50 Keisha State Wrestling Championships. The return comes after a one-year hiatus due to scheduling conflicts. Class 4A will return to Salina and Class 5A will stay in Park City. Taking a look at your menu for today at Eisenhower, your lunch menu is spaghetti, tossed salad, peaches, garlic bread, and milk. At Norton Community High and Junior High School, your lunch today is taco burrito or cheese pizza, green beans, and milk. And at Northern Valley, your lunch today is mini meatball sub, potatoes, vegetable, and fruit. That's been your news. Your KQNK news has been brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, Farmers Helping Farmers Succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your weather is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all your pest control needs. For today, sunny with a high near 73, calm wind becoming south around 5 miles per hour in the afternoon. For tonight, a slight chance of sprinkles between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., then a slight chance of showers after 3 a.m., increasing clouds with a low around 51. South wind around 5 miles becoming west after midnight, chance of precipitation is 20%. For Tuesday, a slight chance of showers before 7 a.m., then a slight chance of sprinkles between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming sunny with a high near 78, a north wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour, chance of precipitation is 10%. Tuesday night is mostly clear with a low around 47, north wind around 5 miles per hour, becoming calm in the evening. For Wednesday, sunny with a high near 77, calm wind becoming northeast around 5 miles per hour, and Wednesday night, clear with a low around 46. I'll be back with more of your weather after this. When you've got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your forecast for Thursday, sunny with a high near 78. Thursday night is mostly clear with a low around 48. Friday, mostly sunny with a high near 78. And Friday night for homecoming, mostly cloudy with a low around 53. Saturday is partly sunny with a high near 78. And Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low 51. And Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 78. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. Your Kansas Sports is up next, and it's being brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more. With the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer. 
Richard Dupuy, Big 12 After Dark, is here as 13th-ranked Kansas State travels to Provo, Utah for a matchup with 3-0 BYU tomorrow night. And Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com joined 580 WIBW in Topeka on Wednesday and previewed the game. If K-State plays with the kind of focus it did against Arizona, I think BYU's going to have problems moving the ball. Now, Rats left a little bit more mobile. You can tuck it and run, and uh, it will do that. So that's a new wrinkle. But K-State consistently is impressing the quarterback this season, making them uncomfortable. And when he's pushed around the pocket and has a little noise in front of him, he doesn't like it very much. So I think that's a significant part of it. And flipping the coin, I just think K-State's team speed is going to give BYU some issues. Uh, you just got some really fast guys that can get their hands on the ball. You know, Avery Johnson, Dylan Edwards, Jace Brown, Keegan Johnson. Yeah, it's it's really uh, going to be a lot for them to try to handle. And I'm uh, interested to see if they put anything new offensively on the field or they just do what they do. Uh, and you know, continue to save stuff because they haven't really dug into their playbook that deeply. Kickoff is set for Saturday at 9.30 p.m. on ESPN, Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupuis. Ranchers, have you considered adding a calf table to your cattle working equipment? The Powder River Classic Calf Table has great features for ease of operation and efficient calf processing. This calf table accommodates calves up to 450 pounds and features a reversible head gate for opposite side branding, optional left or right side tilt, three level tilt down options, and a balanced easy tilt system. Boost the health and performance of your herd. Shop trusted vaccines, dewormers, implants, and more at valleyvet.com. There you'll find exceptional value and a large selection of meds and more. Shipped fast and free on most orders over $75. Find your ranching needs at valleyvet.com or shop their store in Marysville. Valleyvet.com, Valleyvet.com, Valleyvet Supply. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC.